Good morning. Good morning. Unity of Dallas on a beautiful, beautiful spring day, right? So I forgot to turn off my sprinklers. I'm sure my neighbors are like, what? She's watering again. Um, but yeah, my yard will grow a whole lot better than theirs. So you just see those sprinklers make a difference. Mix them with rain. So I'm happy to be here, and as you know, we've got book studies going, studying the Toltecs, the Reese Brothers books, and how many of y'all are in a, a book study? Woo! Yay! So if you're not, get yourself in one. There's one on Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock here at the church, and there's one at 7 o'clock Thursday night at the church. So come and join one, you all. It's so rich to learn together. And, and it's so, uh, I think, spiritually evolving to learn together and study together and discuss together, which brings to mind the Explorers. If you haven't discovered the Explorers at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, you are missing something. Ramona, and she's a licensed teacher, as I am, we trade off every other week, and then our sub is Roger Kennedy, who was our star today. Yay! He's so good, and I knew the class didn't want to listen to me for 45 minutes and then listen to me for another 30 minutes. So I get Roger to sub in, and he is divine. So Mastery of Awareness. Let's look at this. This is from the book Mastery of Life. This is another book by Miguel Reese, Jr. And I thought, well, y'all are studying Mastery of Self, so I'll just pick another one of their books. And let's see what's in it. And you all, I opened that book up. I just opened it up because I thought, I can't read this book in two weeks. I just opened it up, and here's what I found. So the Toltecs. All their wisdom comes from the Toltecs. The Toltecs were an ancient tribe in Mexico. They were there from like 500 to 1000 BC. And uh, for some reason, they were very wise, and their wisdom has been passed down through the years. And they, I'm not sure if the Reeses are, are descendants of the Toltecs. I'm sure they are. Monica says yes. And so they have learned the Toltec wisdom from their father and their grandfather and it just keeps passing on. So let's read this. The gift of the Toltec is in being able to transcend ordinary human awareness and achieve personal freedom. That's what we're going to investigate for the next 20 minutes. Again, transcend ordinary human awareness and achieve personal freedom. What's ordinary human awareness? Well, it's just like I'm standing here and I'm aware and you're out there and I'm, you know, walking on this carpet and Kurt told me not to get too close to the prayer chest because it'll start echoing and so that's going through my head and, uh, and I reminded him, you know, I walk back and forth so can you follow me? And he goes, yeah, we got you, Dad. So that's my awareness right now. Am I personally free right now? I think I'm pretty free. I, I feel pretty good. Um, but I am in my head, because I'm thinking about what I'm going to talk about, right? So the Toltec said four steps to awareness. So these, could, we could say four steps to personal freedom. How do we find what we call personal freedom? We all want it. We all want to have that feeling of being free. You know, even though whatever's going on out there, I'm okay. That's what personal freedom is. I can hold my center. I can be free. I can be in my spiritual self, in my spiritual self. Not there all the time. None of us are. We switch over to ego, don't we? We switch to ego to drive a car. My spirit doesn't know how to drive a car. But then I want to I wanna go back to my spirit as many times a day as I can. So four steps to awareness. The Toltec said... Be aware of physical sensations. Be aware of your thoughts and emotions, reactions and stories, and you will achieve a unique perspective. Okay, let's look at each one of these. 
I put two of my favorite things for physical sensations, flowers and chocolate. I have, I have a chocolate stash in the house. Do you know where it is? Exactly. He said exactly. <laughs> no, I keep moving it. I think he, he nibbles on it. Okay, I hadn't noticed that. That's pleasant. Um, but no, I love chocolate. I think I read somewhere chocolate's good for your heart. And, and I don't know who said it, doesn't matter. I hung on to it. <laughs> and, and I eat chocolate. I like white chocolate. I like that coconut white chocolate. And I also like Cadbury's milk chocolate. That is the best chocolate in the world. And, um, and I eat one to three squares, depending on my mood. You know, sometimes we need more, don't we? And uh, it's my drug of choice. One to three squares after, not breakfast, but lunch and dinner. And um, anyway, I'm, I think I'm happier. And I think my heart's healthier because of my habit. Flowers, let's talk about flowers. I've said it before, I cannot believe how many shapes, how many colors, how many patterns. If you have never gotten into flowers, and I remember I was dating Gerald, and we were over in Europe, and I saw some flowers in the square, I think it was in Madrid, and I said, come here, come here. And he thought I was weird anyway. So I said, come here and look. He came over and, and I said, look at those flowers. And he goes, uh-huh, nice. So I said, no. I said, come back. I said, look at those flowers. Really look. And it was amazing that this man stopped. He stopped. And I watched him look. And he goes, Wow. He got it. He said, wow. And I said, ooh, I'm going to marry him. <laughs> this is a good thing. He got it. And he still talks about, because I think it was a transformative experience for him to stop and smell the flowers, right? That's a real saying. That's a real thing. And, um, and flowers are amazing. They're amazing. I know, Stephen, you're into flowers. I'm so into flowers. And uh, I remember I, I was given the message a couple years ago, and, and I said, there are no green flowers. And I had got like five emails that day. Oh, yes, there are. And because and, some ladies knew about some green flowers. They come in every color. So I see the angels in God's workshop, and they're all, they're artists. So there are angels that are artists, and so they're each in their little cubicle, and their job is to create a new flower. And, you know, they, they fly down to the boss's office and say, hey, boss, what about a flower that looks like a pitcher? Oh, cool. Do it. Okay. And they fly back, and they create the pitcher plant, and it looks like a pitcher. You, you could fill up that little flower with water and pour from it. But if you really, really study flowers, you'll see that patterns are repeated throughout nature. And some pattern, patterns resemble parts of our bodies. I won't go into that, some of you know. It's amazing, it's extraordinary. So notice our physical sensations to, to become more aware. Toltecs say this is your first step, to stop and listen. Stop and listen. Taste something. Don't just eat your meal as fast as you can. Taste your meal. It's to go slowly with whatever we're doing. We race through life, don't we? Every night I turn down our bed and I go, wow, where'd the day go? It's just like, boom, it's gone. Touch something and really feel Touch your cushions right now on the, on, that you're sitting on, your chairs. Have you ever noticed it's kind of a nubby uh, fabric? I don't know the name because I don't know fabrics. It's kind of nubby, isn't it? And the color of it. Do we ever notice things like this? So it's called noticing. Noticing more to be more aware. Number two, notice your thoughts and emotions. Ooh, that's a biggie. That's a biggie. 
pause and listen to your thoughts and say, thinking, because this little computer just runs it. It runs it all day long. 6,000 thoughts and more. I don't know who counted those, right? <laughs> some some uh, PhD, sounds like a PhD project. Nothing against PhDs, but that's what, you know, 6,000 thoughts a day. And how many of them are we really conscious of? Hmm, some of them, some of them. Some of them we drive, some of them it drives. Have you ever not been able to go to sleep? Because it's so busy. Oh my goodness, I forgot to lock the door. Oh, you know, did I take my vitamin? I can't remember, should I take two? What will it do to me? I mean, all these thoughts just come, 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 come. And it's amazing that we have this computer, but we need, in order to be aware, we need to be able to pause the computer. Hit the pause button every once in a while and just stop, like right now. Just stop. And notice your thoughts. How long is she going to make us stop? This is weird. I got thoughts I need to think. Yeah, it wants to start up again, doesn't it? it wants, it's like, whoa, no, I'm supposed to be thinking. That's my job. Emotions. Every time you walk through a doorway, this book says, notice how you're feeling. How often do you notice how you're feeling? Well, I notice when I'm angry. I notice when I'm frustrated. Gerald, was, we were doing something. It was tedious. I can't do tedious stuff. And I just handed it off. I think it had to do with the TV. I just handed it off to him. I said, I can't do this. I can't. It's too tedious. I'm frustrated. And I said, I'm frustrated. But kind of, we kind of notice our, our emotions that are more negative, don't we? Instead of, I'm peaceful. Oh, I'm so peaceful today. I'm so happy today. I'm so in gratitude today. Oh, that's a good one. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful. Let's go to number three. Number three, reactions and stories. Begin to notice your reactions to others. This is a big step in awareness. Mm, look who's here. I'm, oh, she's here again. I wonder if she's gonna talk through the whole deal. Yep, here she goes. <laughs> Notice your reaction. What are you supposed to do with those? Wow, she's talking through the whole class. She needs to be heard. She needs to be heard. That's a different perspective, right? To have, huh, she needs people. She's probably lonely. I'm going to reach out to her after class. Yeah. Notice patterns. What patterns do you run? What patterns do you run? Your patterns came from your parents in age zero to seven. What patterns did they run? My mother was, I loved her to death, the queen of the martyrs. And you know how she did it? She banged the pans around. In the kitchen, a family of six, She's cooking all the time, because back then we didn't have fast food or anything like that. So she would bang pans. I thought, wow, she only uses two. I mean, <laughs> but she put them back in the drawer and take them out. And I think she just stood there and banged them for a while. <laughs> it probably helped her with, with her frustration of raising four kids. And, uh, and I go in there, I say, Mom, do you need help? And that was the perfect codependent. Mom, do you need help? No, I'm fine. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> I go, Mom, I'll help you. Nope, I'm fine. Oh, my goodness. So that's one of my patterns. I ran martyrdom for years. I ran martyrdom through two marriages. And then I gave it up to, thanks to Al-Anon, I finally realized what I was doing. It was not attractive. I began 
In my second marriage, when I had children, I began to create the home I was raised in. I had found the perfect man that was just like my father, and I became my mother, and we were off and running. We made it six years. Six years and two kids, and that was the end of it. Because I said, no more. I'm not going to do this anymore. He refused to go to therapy. He refused to look at his patterns. I was beginning to look at my patterns, because I was in Al-Anon by then. And I said, you know what? I don't want to pass on these patterns to my children. Because they'll go out and find, you know, me. They'll marry me. And, and they'll find a martyr to marry, and they'll recreate the home they grew up in. Ask yourself when you make up a story. Mm, I saw somebody in church this morning, and she looked at me in a weird way. Hmm. Well, I know. I know what that's about. I know what that's about. That's because in class Tuesday, I said something that she didn't like. And I wonder if she'll ever come back to class. Huh, she probably won't. Yeah. And then she shows up in class. And I go, oh, was my story true? And she comes up to me and says, oh, I was in such a bad mood last Sunday. You know, something happened with my son, and he said something. And I'm like, oh. So my whole story was false, right? It was all, it was all false. That's Byron Katie. She said, ask yourself, is it true? Is what you're thinking true? Is it even true? And then once you practice all of these steps, you will get a unique perspective. By practicing the first three steps, you reach this final step organically. Increase your ability to see things differently. You grasp a deeper truth in paradox and the unknown and you gain a vast perspective. And then the Toltecs say, you got to work them again. You're not home. You're not home free. As human beings, we get to that place of having a unique perspective, a new outlook on life, personal freedom. And then the ego jumps in, right? And says, oh, whatever. And then you got to work them again. But I think the wisdom is knowing the steps. When you get in that bad place, oh, I need to go back and smell a flower. I need to go sit in the yard. I need to hug a tree. Seriously, you all. I'm sure this is unity, so we can talk like this, right? And I've heard people say, my tree talks to me. My, so I, ha I have all of these, um, what are they? Uh, I can't remember. They're bushes that go beside the driveway. And we put them in two years ago. And, and they're kind of growing. They're kind of, they're like, they were like really short to begin with. Now they're kind of here. But there's one that's still here. There's one little guy that's still there. So I thought this morning, I was getting ready to leave, and I walked over to the little one, and I touched it. And I said, it's okay, buddy. You can grow. <laughs> you can catch up with your brothers and sisters. You can do this. It just rained. You got all that water plus the sprinkler water. <laughs> You've got plenty of water. So go ahead and, and, isn't that interesting? That just dawned on me. Go ahead and let go and find your personal freedom, right? Why are you holding back? You can grow, you can grow big and pretty. They should get like this big. We'll see. So I love the word organically. Now that's a new word for somebody my age. My daughter-in-law uses it all the time, so I, I've kind of gotten to know what it means. Something happens organically, it happens naturally. 
naturally. So if we do these four steps, we naturally become more aware. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I get bored. I just get bored with life. I'm like, oh, same old, same old every day. But if I go through these steps, especially the one that says, are you running a pattern? I'm bored. That's a pattern. Quit running it. And are your stories true? Is the story about me true? I may be making up a story about me. Poor me. It may be a poor me story. So to be aware is to listen to your thoughts, interrupt your thoughts, and change it. I had a friend one day many years ago, one of my oldest friends, and um, I'll never forget it. I must have been in my 40s. And she said, you're playing a small game, Deb. Wow. I said, really? And she goes, yep. She's about 15 years older. And um, I'll never forget that. What a great thing to say to your best friend. And I began to change my life in different ways so that I played a big game. And I think from then on, I began to play a big game because that's what I focused on. That's what I brought in. You all, I was so shy when I was little. I was taking trampoline lessons. I told this a long time ago, and I think I was five or six. And the teacher asked my mom why I didn't talk. And she said, I, I don't know, I think she just doesn't talk a lot. And the man said, well, you know, I'm worried about her. She doesn't talk all through class. And um, I hated trampoline, so maybe that was part of it. it. Scared me to death. They put you in that harness and make you flip. And I mean, that's really weird for a five-year-old. And, but I didn't, I didn't talk, I was so shy. And, and then, you know, just, I guess through the years, I didn't talk much. I didn't talk much. And then maybe I had to talk when I started teaching school. <laughs> yeah. I was 22 and started teaching in the middle of the year. A teacher had left because she was showing uh, she was pregnant in 1972, and, and the school made her quit. And so I took her place mid-year, and I had to talk, right? So high school kids, you got to talk, or they will eat you alive. So I got eaten alive for about four or five months, and I came back. I came back, and I taught 23 years. So I want to tell you a story to end, and I want to tell it because of the position that our church is in right now without a minister. And a lot of people have asked me, where's the new minister? When, when is he or she coming? We don't have a search committee put together. We don't even have a search committee put together. So we are taking our time. There are five of us, seven in all, two of them have already taken the class, that we're taking a 14-month class with Unity Worldwide to work on our, I would say, work on our energy as a church. Um, to do some things that will bring us closer together. And I think one of them is our study group. We look at, Unity Worldwide has looked at megachurches. And I talked to my daughter-in-law, she goes to a megachurch. I said, what do you love about your church? And she said, the small groups. She's in three small groups. And they can range from a hiking group to a gardening group, to a spiritual book study group. So that's something that we're thinking about, just to bring us together. Because during the week, we're not together unless you're in my Tuesday book study. And Al has a uh, meditation class Saturday morning. Lynn Patterson has one online Sunday morning. And, you know, that's about all we have during the week. But what if we had, now we have our book studies, what if we had one or two or three groups that you might want to join? You might want to help in the gardening around the church. That may be your thing. So we'll be, that'll be coming more probably in the fall. 
And, um, but I want to tell a story to end. So there's this tribe in Africa called the Ubantus, the Ubantus. And an, an anthropologist was studying these children in the tribe, and he was playing with the children one day, and he said, uh, the first one to that tree gets, he called it sweet fruits, gets to eat the sweet fruits. The kids all joined hands, ran to the tree together, and the man said, why did you run together? One of you could have gotten all the sweet fruits. And they said, oh no. They said, we are all best friends. So we all joined hands, went together, so we could eat the sweet fruits together. So apparently, Ubantu means we are one in their language. So that's what I vision for our church, is that we are holding hands through this time, learning and evolving and growing. We don't have to have a minister to grow spiritually. You grow spiritually on your own. It's a decision to evolve your soul. And that's what we're here for, to evolve your soul. So are you reading? What is your spiritual practice? What's your daily spiritual practice? We had a friend, um, a couple of us were together this week, and we had a friend ask us, she's younger, and she said, what's y'all's spiritual practice? And we got to share our spiritual practice. Each one of us has something that we do in the morning to get our day going. We read something, we pray, we meditate. To recognize that I am a spiritual being. I am a spiritual being having a human experience, and I let go and let God first thing in the morning. Let go and let God to whatever God is to you, to the source that created us. So the source always has us. We cannot be disconnected from God. We're always connected to God. But are you aware that you're connected to God? That's the question, and that's the mastery of awareness. Let's take all of this into a meditation. Let's do some healing work. Just uncross your feet, uncross your arms. And as we open up, we think of someone or something we're grateful for. And we know in the space of gratitude that we have just entered into our spirit. And we feel our spirit. We feel the part of us that is free, that is free of judgment, free of fear, the part of us that is pure love, And we sit in this place of pure love where there are no worries, no cares, no stories, no thoughts. And we bring into this place of pure love anything that's bothering us. We bring it in. We bring it in and let pure love purify it. If you're worried about something, if you have fear, if you have a pain or an ache or an illness, bring it into that space and see the light of pure love around it. Knowing that this light is healing, it's a healing light. It's a transforming light. And let the light that you are heal you. And feel the healing 
Take the light, run it through your body. Run it through your legs, through your feet. Run the light back up through your torso, through your arms, your hands, your fingers. Run the light up through your head. And then take it back into your heart. Knowing that light is always there, you can always access that light at any time to heal. To heal thoughts, to heal your body, And we are in awe, we are in awe of this healing power that we possess. And we are in gratitude for all that we have, all that we are. And we say thank you, Father, Mother, God, in the name and power of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.